Howdy everybody, welcome back to Accounting 1101 where it is finally time to talk about debits and credits. How in the world did we make it this far along in an accounting class without talking about debits and credits and double entry bookkeeping? I'm amazed as you are, but we're going to fix that today in our video. Now, if you think back to last chapter, we gave an intro to the financial statements. We talked about the different types of financial statements. Hopefully you remember there are four main financial statements, the four horsemen of the accounting apocalypse, as it were. We have the income statement. We have the statement of owner's equity. Do you remember the next one? Balance sheet. And then finally, we had the statement of cash flows. Now, we talked about them. We showed you what they look like. We did everything except make them, right? And so there are a couple of questions that are kind of hanging out there in regards to the financial statements. First of all, where does the information come from? We showed you the end result. We showed you the financial statements. Where in the heck do we get the information to even make the financial statements? How do we put that information into our accounting system? And so really that's where we're going to be spending a lot of our time over the next couple of weeks, compiling the information, putting it into our accounting system so we can make the wonderful financial statements. The other big question hanging out there, what is the meaning of life? You're probably not going to figure that out in an accounting class. Maybe you will, but I'm betting you probably won't. Probably need to take a theology or a philosophy class for that one. We'll do what we can here though. Let's talk about where does the financial statement information come from? Well, it comes from all the transactions that happen during the period. A transaction is simply a business activity or event that has an effect on the financial statement. And so we think about Walmart. When they sell inventory, when they buy inventory, when they pay employees, when they buy or sell a parcel of land, when they pay the electric bill, all of those are transactions, aren't they? And so in accounting, all we're doing is simply taking all of these transactions, we're recording them correctly, and then compiling financial statements that tell the story of what happened during the period. So one other thing to point out, all this information uh, on the transactions is going to come from our source documents. A source document is a paper or electronic record that provides evidence of a transaction and includes details of what happened in the transaction. If you've ever bought anything and have been given a receipt, guess what? You've got a source document in your hand. Invoices, bills, memos, all of that can be a source document from which we pull information to make a transaction. All right? So, transactions are very important. All the business activities and events are recorded in our accounting records and we use that information to make our financial statements like the income statement that you see right here. Every time you shopped at Walmart in 2024 and you ran that item over the register and it went beep, that is captured somewhere in that $642 billion net sales number, believe it or not. So the question becomes how do we record the transactions. We know that transactions happen. We know they have to get into the accounting system. How do we do that? Well, we use a thing called the double entry accounting system. Now, I'm going to take you way back and give you a history lesson right here. And you're probably thinking, well, man, history and accounting put together sounds like a complete bore, right? But this is pretty interesting to me anyway. Double entry bookkeeping system. The system we use today was invented and created by a dude in 1494, an Italian monk and mathematician named Luca Pacioli. You know the old uh, nursery rhyme you learned in elementary school? In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. While Columbus was sailing around the world, this dude was in Italy coming up with accounting. He invented double entry bookkeeping in 1494. The system he came up with is over 500 years old. Think about that for a second. If you make up something and people are still using it or talking about it 500 years later, that's pretty impressive. So there he is. He is the godfather of accounting. 
Luca Patioli. He came up with double entry accounting. The components, the basic components of double entry accounting are the account. The account show increases and decreases to an asset, liability, or equity item. So everything is an account. You can see here on the balance sheet, we've got a cash account, account receivable, inventory, prepaid expenses, property, goodwill. All these are accounts that we can put numbers into. And the ledger, you can't see that here, but the ledger helps us keep track of all the balances and all the accounts. And we'll learn how to fill out ledgers a little bit later on. So, visualizing an account. Your book talks about something called a T-account. Not named after me, unfortunately. Uh, I came along much later than the T-accounts. But we can see they're called a T-account because every account can be kind of set up like a T. Here's my T. Every account has a left side. Every account has a right side. And you'll notice... You'll notice on my account here, I've got a debit side and I've got a credit side. Now, here's where you're going to get the Professor Martin brainwashing. I need you, for me, right now, to forget everything you know about debit. Forget everything you know about credit. Whatever meaning in your life that you have attached to the words debit and credit, I need you to forget it. And you say, well, well, Professor Martin, I've got a debit card. And when I put money onto it, they debit my account or they take money out of my account when I use it. I've got a credit card and they credit my account when I buy something and they uh, debit my account when I pay it up. Forget all that. All of it. If you've worked in a bank, forget everything you know about debit memo, credit memo, whatever. Forget it. I'm going to tell you right now everything you need to know about the word debit and the word credit. It's very complicated. So clear your desk, you know, close out whatever app you might have on the phone watching while you're listening to my video lecture. I need complete focus right now. Debit. The only meaning that it has in accounting, the only meaning it has is left. You can raise your left hand and say debit. That's it. It doesn't mean up, it doesn't mean down, it doesn't mean anything else besides left. So what do you think credit means? It means right. Debit is the left-hand side of an account, credit is the right-hand side of an account. All right, that's the only connotation it has in accounting. That's all you need to know to be an accountant. Debit is left, credit is right. You can go to your tattoo parlor if you need to. Get DBT tattooed on your left knuckle. CRT, credit, tattooed on your right knuckle. Whatever you need to do, but you have to memorize debit is left, credit is right. If you can do that and forget everything else you thought you knew about debit and credit, you are on your way to being an accountant. So our double entry accounting system, we need to know debit is left and credit is right. We also need to understand the accounting equation. I've already talked about how in the accounting equation, Everything in accounting revolves around that equation. Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Every transaction that we record in our double entry accounting system will impact the accounting equation. And as we already know, that equation has to stay in balance. The way that equation is always in balance is when we record a transaction, we always involve at least two accounts. We have a debit, and a credit. One account's going to be debited, one account's going to be credited. And in doing so, our system will stay in balance. Also, the way that it stays in balance is every time we record a transaction, the sum of our debits from a dollar standpoint has to equal the dollar sum of our credits. Every transaction, debits have to equal credits, dollar-wise. I can have a transaction with five debits and two credits. That's cool as long as the dollar amounts are the exact same on both sides. So, debit is left, credit is right. Debits always have to equal credits in dollar amount for every transaction. If you've got your brain wrapped around that, guess what? You are ready. 
you've graduated the entry lesson for debits and credits and double entry bookkeeping and you're now ready to start recording transactions which we're going to get to in our next couple of videos i'm pumped i'm excited hopefully you are too if you have any questions about anything accounting related even if you want my opinion as to what the meaning of life is i would be happy to share any of that with you feel free to reach out anytime until next time take care everybody